Hey everyone, I'm Diego Vitelli. Welcome to a new video, Vitelli Boxing. Today I want to teach you the art of pressuring, the art of putting pressure to your opponent. The invisible game that obviously no one sees, but you should know in order to pressure your opponent and the footwork that is needed in order to shorten the gap. If you need to close the gap, you need to, you need to try these three different ways of, of using your footwork. So let's begin with the class. When we talk about pressure, most people think it's like you have to be like a, like a robot, maybe like a Terminator and just walk forward, walk forward and, and get all the punches. But actually, pressuring your opponent is not about attacking your opponent, it's actually everything about defense. If you don't have a great defense, you can go forward and you will get all, all the time punching. It will be really easy for your opponent to escape. So pressure your opponent is all about defense. There are three types of defense that you should know. The number, number one is the easiest one is reacting. You're just moving forward and you have to react to the punches that your opponent, their opponent uh, throws. Number two is you anticipate. You are, you're moving forward, you anticipate your opponent by, by his movement because you already studied him. You anticipate and you can move. That's the second one. And the third one is for the master, is for the pro, for the pro fighter. The, the third one is you force your opponent's punches. You force him to do what you want to do. So that's the, that, that's the one that we're going to focus today. So for that, we need to work our defense with another thing, with another, with another technique or a key that it's the, the invisible game that I just said in the, in the intro. The invisible game, it's about creating an illusion to your opponent and, 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 and it will work because we will force him to throw punches. How can we do that? We're going to force him and we're going we're gonna, to we're, we're gonna create an illusion that we're actually attacking him. We're going to put him some pressure, psychological pressure by doing a lot of movement. By that I mean maybe you can use your, your, your fencing stance, you can move your, your lead arm, you can move your lead arm and you can be moving side to side, your head side to side and that will create, that will, that will create a, a lot of psychological pressure to your opponent and that will force him to throw punches. So moving a lot your arm, having some feints, moving your head side to side and even doing some sounds sh 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 that will put a lot of pressure to your opponent psychologically you're creating an illusion remember you have to act you have to sell these techniques so you have to be a really good actor you have to be moving really really like as real as you can get so he can throw the punches you can slip them as you, as you force him and you can counter him remember the 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 golden rule here is don't try to punch your opponent don't try to punch your opponent because that's a, that's a mistake. It's easy for him maybe to counter you and you're, and you're putting too much risk. When you're pressuring, create this illusion, this invisible game and make and force him to do those mistakes so you can counter him. To work at home, the best, the best equipment you can use is a double end bag. And what we're going to use is we're going to taunt our opponent. We're going to use all, the, all, the, all this invisible game that I just said. And we're going to feint. We're going to taunt our opponent move. We're going to force him, but we, are, we have to practice our defense. We have, to, we have to catch punches, we have to move, we have to move our, our feet, switch stances. If we are pressuring our opponent, it means that we're moving forward. We're moving forward, and for that, of course, if you're moving forward, you have to use your footwork. For this footwork, we're going to use three different types of footwork that you can use and you have to use all of them because um, all of them use different, different rhythms and different speeds. If you only use one, it's really easy for him to anticipate and even counter you or catch you with any punch. So make sure you use all of them so you can be unpredictable with your opponent. Number one is just walking. It's the slowest one, it's the slowest one but you have to walk. You're walking to your opponent, you walk, you walk him and you're moving your arm, you're moving, you're, you're taunting, you're, you're proving him. Yeah, that's the first one, just walking, just walking, always positioning yourself. If he moves to the left, if he moves to his right, you move to your left, a little positioning. You move, you move and you're positioning always so he can't, he, he, he can't escape, but you're always putting pressure to him. The second one is you're going, you're going to use darting, darting forward or jumping forward. In Spanish, we call desplazamiento. Desplazamiento or darting forward means we're going to put the tip of our toe the, the, from our rear foot and we're going to move forward. This is a really explosive movement and it helps you to, 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 to surprise your opponent. You're moving maybe slow, 
your movement will be slow, and then you catch your opponent with a punch. Maybe a, a gazelle hook, or maybe a jab, or maybe you're moving here, slow, you're putting pressure, you can, and you throw a cross, and you throw a cross. So, darting forward or using this desplazamiento will help you to move really fast to change the rhythm and catch your opponent when you're putting pressure. And the third one, it's a, a really good one, and it's a double shift, it's, a, it's another way of moving. And, it's in, and you're going to be walking in a straight line, completely in a straight line, using your footwork. Whenever you throw your jab, you're going you're gonna to step with your, right, with your right foot. You're going to throw your jab, but since I'm walking in a straight line, I have to move my head out of the center line so he doesn't catch me with a punch. So I throw my jab and I throw my cross. This is a good one because you, you close the gap really fast and you can do it from a long range. You can do it from a long, long range. He feels he's safe. He feels it's really safe, you're moving, you're moving slow, probably you're moving long, and then you go pop, pop, with two punches. I'll go one, two, and you move. One last tip, whenever you are putting pressure and you are closing the gap, is to always have your, your side, your, your, you are always looking at his, at his feet. You're always looking at his feet. Never try to, never try to see, to, to look at your opponent's eyes or maybe his head. If you see to your opponent's head, you are unconsciously going to raise your head and that will put you in a, in a, in a position that it's vulnerable to a, a better punch for him. So if you look to your opponent's feet, that's enough. Wherever his feet are, your opponent is. So don't, don't worry about his head. Always keep pressuring, looking at his feet. Keep your chin tucked and use these three different types of, um, of footwork because they will definitely help you because you're changing rhythms. You got the one that is walking. Second one, desplazamiento, or darting forward. And the third one is the double shift, commonly used by uh, Soviet Union or Russian fighters. Thanks everyone for watching my video. Remember, the art of pressuring is not about attacking, it's about defense, and it's about being intelligent and using good tactics, as, we, as I always train in human chess. And remember, human chess is another way of training, it's another philosophy, another discipline, where we are trying always to look how you express yourself, how fluent are your, your movements, how, how fluid are your movements, and also, of course, how many techniques you can use in order to, to neutralize your opponent, to, to look for a checkmate. It's, it's just a game. I will show you in another video with, with a student how we practice human chess so you can also train with a partner somewhere else. So it's because, because it's just a game and it's really fun because it will sharpen your mind and your body. And leave me a comment below. A thumbs up and I'll see you next week.